fantasy as a vehicle for innovation and invention. I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Daria Yagorina, strategic futurist and CEO of Clever Books. Welcome, Daria. Thanks for having me, Tanya. Absolutely. So, what kind of work do you do at Clever Books? So, I'm working on developing the future for the kids through the developing their fantasy and using one of the important tools today, which is augmented reality. It's called the emerging technology, but I'm pretty sure that many people know what it is and how exciting it could be in helping kids in developing creative thinking. What role does fantasy play in fostering innovation and invention? We live in the world of innovation. And we live, whatever we see today was somebody's dreams somewhere back in the past. And I think that the best we can do today is develop future innovators and inventors. Innovation is a fantasy. Somebody was thinking that it might be possible and he made it possible. That's why I think developing fantasy and creative thinking at school level is, uh, is the success ticket for every single kid to get to the innovator of the future. How have you seen augmented reality used to stimulate creative thinking? Let's go by example. So augmented reality could be used for different purposes. It's pretty much overlaying some 3D objects on the real life. So you can see the real world and you can see the, um, the augmented world around. And I would call it augmenting the education. And let's go by example. Let's take the uh, classroom where the teacher can represent, uh, can present the space and the spaceship construction by using the augmented reality. And kids can assemble and disassemble spaceships in the classroom. They can send them into space and that will help them to imagine how they can be um, future um, constructors of the space. They can do, they, how they can plan those trips, how get, they can um, see the life outside the earth for example, another example, kids can go and uh, travel the world right in their classroom or right from their home, just having some picture and the mobile app, which can um, reproduce different types of landscapes or animals or plants or heritage in absolutely different countries. And I think augmented reality is a fantastic cool that, uh, tool that gives them an opportunity to imagine, to innovate, to think, to create without any cost of mistake because it's a software and you can repeat and repeat the same action again and again. Are there particular age groups that respond better to AR than others? Yes, I was actually uh, going through different researches about in the augmented reality and it seems to be applicable in the K-12 as the best one. And the reason for that is just kids at the age of, K, um, of K-12 are um, perceiving the information at different levels and different amounts really quickly. And they're like a sponge. They're interested in the world around until they are spoiled with some monotonous uh, methods of teaching or books or something else. If we give this diverse application of tools like augmented reality or virtual reality at this age, we'll help them to boost this interest in learning information and getting as more as possible from what is already known to have the background and um, and this the opportunity to create something new in the future. Do some subjects translate to AR better than others, or can you develop AR-based curriculum for just about any any topic? Yeah, absolutely. So we need to think about all the tools that are available for education strategically, and from what those tools can do. Augmented reality is a visual tool, so whatever could be represented in terms of visual like anything that could be visualized in 3D or 2D could be obviously um, integrated into augmented reality. Like um, imagine the concepts of uh, geometry and 3D shapes. It's so much easier to explain a tetrahedron or cross section of complex 3D shapes via augmented reality because you can see them, you can touch them. And what I love about augmented reality, and I love saying that it touches seeing, hearing and doing. So it helps to see hear and touch the knowledge, literally. Who are the people and companies that are creating this AR lesson content right now? So there are different, obviously, people. It could be only developers. It could be um, developers combined with teachers. If we talk about clever books, for example, 
the company uses the groups of teachers that, that has access to different curriculums around the world and they build curriculum-based STEM-oriented um, augmented reality solutions that could be a supplementary to any curriculum of the world. And I think that's the most important thing for any educator or school principal to select the educational technology strategically. So they need to think that it needs to be not only a toy or a fun, but also bring some value to the pupils. What, what are the results you've seen on retention rates and test scores using this type of technology? So obviously, as one of the exciting emerging technologies, augmented reality retains up to 100% of attention in the classroom, just because it's exciting, it's something new, it's not something like just a book, especially when it's a combination of the book and the AR picture in the book, as an example. Um, and it's, um, it, gets, it gives up to 30, uh, 33% of the, uh, of the score boost, which, is, uh, which helps kids to retain the information quicker and longer. And that's because I've already mentioned, because it touches all the kinetic, visual, and audio senses. That's one thing. And second thing, it also helps to feel in a different world without leaving the classroom. Literally, bring the elephant to the classroom is possible now. It's not a joke. <laughs> Daria Yegorina, strategic futurist and CEO of Cleverbooks. If somebody wants to connect with you, maybe they want to find out more about bringing augmented reality to their classroom. How can they do that? They're welcome to get connected with me on the LinkedIn. Sounds good. Thanks again, Daria. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here or go to tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.